I wanted to talk to you on the, on the four influences of healing. And I don't think anywhere in the world have I heard this message or unpackaged or demystified healing. And, and in our life, from time to time, we will need a miracle because that's just the nature of life. And it may not be healing, but it may be something else. It may be financial or mental or, or whatever it could be. But we will need God to come in and to do something in our, in our life. And so uh, not, not, for, uh, not for bragging uh, or anything like, like that, but in our 10 years of traveling, we've seen over 100,000 people come to Christ. We were averaging 228 decisions every weekend that we traveled. We saw 53 people walk out of wheelchairs who wrote into our office saying that they were healed. And so, so there was a groundswell of, of, of things happening. And then God spoke to me and he said, Andrew, I want you to plant a church in Wollongong. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that's, a, that's a change. And, um, <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm here for his service. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with him. And so, and, and, and we have seen incredible miracles happen in our church. Even last couple of weeks, a lady who was pregnant, four months pregnant, got her scan. The scan came back saying the baby had severe disability, spina bifida, organs missing, and they had to abort the baby. Um, and we're, we're not a, a big church like this church. So everybody knew the story. And I said to the husband, we're going to pray and God's going to do a miracle. He said, Andrew, I've never seen a miracle. I don't believe in miracles. And I'm finding it hard to believe. I said, it doesn't matter because I've got faith. I'm going to believe. Stand with me. We prayed. The next scan. No problems. No sickness. No health. Baby's perfect. Come on. Give God a... So I, I want to talk quickly about the four influences of healing because this, this is important. Yeah. And I, re, I really believe that the first influence of healing, and you may not think this is rocket science, but it's very important, is actually God <laughs> and Jesus. And why I say that is because in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, it says, But surely He took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered Him punished by God, stricken by Him and afflicted. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And the last one, by His wounds, we are healed. And so I want to say this. Uh, for me, the bottom line is God wants to heal everyone. Everyone, all the time, anywhere, anyhow. And the reason I say that is because of the great lengths Jesus went to for our healing. You see, when He died on the cross, come on church, we know that He died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We have prayed that prayer. How many times? For myself personally, I've probably been born again, 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 a hundred times. Because we pray the prayer. We say, God, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. You died on the cross, you know, and you forgive me Easter. Every Easter, we celebrate what happened on the cross. But on the way to the cross, come on, guys. Every beating, every whipping, the crown of the spear, the whole thing. We've seen the Passion of the Christ movie. Doesn't do it justice. Even though I could hardly watch all the whippings and beatings. He was unrecognisable. He had no skin. That's how they bit Him. That's how they whipped, whipped Him. By His stripes. Whoosh, cancer left. Arthritis is gone. Leukemia, <laughs> bow its knee. He took it all for us. So people are wondering, does God want to heal? Hey, adjust your, adjust your theology. 
He wants you to heal. So I want to, I want to talk about these things. I want to unpackage this and talk about like the real nitty gritty of it. Because this is my bottom line. Because if I'm, if I'm doubting that, I'm doubting salvation. If I think, oh God, he's, he's not really front footed. No, he's, he's front footed, all right. He wants you to heal, be healed. He wants your life to turn around. He's into miracles. Miracles happen all the time, all around the world. All around the world, miracles are happening. People have been healed, raised from the dead all the time. Hmm. The second person or influence of healing is the person doing the praying. <laughs> James 5 says, If anyone is in trouble, let him pray. Is he happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any of you sick? Come on. What does it say? Call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord, who? The Lord will rise him up. If they've sinned, oops, they will be forgiven. It says then, therefore, come on, there's a little bit of work. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you may be what? Healed. Healed. It's, it's, it's like a little program, isn't it? You may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person, hello, may be powerful and effective. That's you, that's a born again Christian. Powerful and effective. And then it, and then it just gives us a little, little side note. Elijah, why are we talking about Elijah? Was a human being. Hello? Was he? Yes, he was. And what he's trying to say, he's just like you and me. Elijah was just like you and me. He's just a human being. Well, that's comforting. And when he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, it did not rain for, for three and a half years. And then he prayed to the heavens and gave rain and the earth produced its crops. What's that got to do with healing? He just went on a little, whoop, like little side note. And by the way, Elijah, <laughs> a human being, just like you and me, he prayed, shifted atmospheres. What, 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 what did he say then? He said, he said, Andrew, prayer has got power. When you pray, you can shift rain. Your words have power. Healing. It says, that, we, don't, we don't like this. But it says, if you're sick, come to church. Don't come to church on your best day. Come to church on your worst day. Don't come to church when everything's good and you, you sold the house for a bigger price and you're so excited. No, come to church when you're sad, depressed and sick. Why? Because it says, come and the elders will pray for you. Who are these people who are elders? You know, in the Bible, there's a qualification to be an elder. And basically, this is it. It's men and women of God who are fired up. They're not practicing. I'm not practicing today. I'm not, I'm, I'm, like, it's the Lord who heals. But I'm fired up. I'm ready to go, baby. Like, I feel like there's like 50 butterflies inside of me. Like, feel like, like miracles inside of me that are ready to go. Bust out somewhere. I've been up this morning praying, calling down the fire of God, calling down miracles, believing that something's going to shift for you. The church was praying for you this morning, believing that something's going to turn. So we don't come to church on our best day. We come on our worst day. Because when, it, when you're sick and you've given up on everything else, just wumble down the front, sad, depressed, lonely, and we'll pray for you. And we'll believe for your baby. We'll believe that cancer's going to shift. We'll believe that something's going to turn in your life. Come on, church. Give God a big clap and thank our leaders who stand and believe God for a miracle for you. Call on the elders. Let them pray for you. It says it like this. If you've stuffed up, get your life right. Say sorry to Him. 
Sin separates us from God. I learned that then when I was five. Like, like a little puppet show. Sin separates us from God. God forgives all our sin. When I was five, and it still is real today, is when I was five. But we're so stupid. God, I want a miracle. I want the miracle to do something. But I won't be honest with Him. I won't humble myself and say, God, I'm an idiot. Forgive me. Not that He's angry. He just wants that relationship restored. And it says, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Who's he talking about? Well, he's talking about me. Today, I'm I'm the guy that's on the team we're going to be praying. I actually take this reasonably serious. (laughs) Because somebody will come forward today. You may have cancer. I'm praying that God would use me through the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the cancer's going to fall. The story's going to turn around. Friends, He's talking about you. Being ready. Are you ready? We don't have to be perfect. But are you ready? Are you able? Could you put your hand on somebody in your school or university, your workplace and see God move through you? I was here in Adelaide at a youth conference a few years ago. And I was speaking at at, at this conference and I shared my story and the pastor came up to me and said, Andrew, there's two people with leukemia, one's terminal, Another person's in the hospital, would you go visit? And I said, yeah, 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 I'll come. So me and Janine went and, uh, and we had lunch. He was 18 years old. He could be in this room. And, um, and so we were there and his fiance was there. Mum and dad were there and me were here. And were, he was engaged. And I said to him, what did you tell the doctors um, when he told you you were terminal? Because that's what happened to me. And that's what had happened to him. And he smiled at me and he said, I said to the doctors, what are you going to say? What are you going to do when I come back and I'm healed? (laughs) Hmm. And just at that little point, I remember thinking, he's got more faith than me. And I felt a little bit um, not ready. It's, it's It's not a good feeling not to be ready. But I just thought, I'm, mm, he's got more juice than me at the moment. And I literally said to him, oh, we're going to pray in a minute in, a, in, a, in, the, in the lobby. We had organized a, it's a private space. I said, but just give me a moment. And I went up there. I fell on my knees. I said, God, he's, he's looking to me through you. I know, I, know, I know how it works. The person doing the praying has got a responsibility. And the, the amazing thing is that he was went into remission and God had healed him, but not, I wasn't feeling like, I said to the Lord, I don't want to ever be caught out again. I want to be ready. I want to have the anointing of God. God wants to heal people. We are God's advocate. We're, we're His hands and feet on earth. And I want to say this because before I forget, God can do it any way He wants because He's God. If I knew all the formulas, I would just write a book, travel the world, retire. But it's not like that. God, God can heal the, the naughtiest person with, with no repentance or anything like that, and that's His thing. And then sometimes the most godly person who has never sinned in his whole entire life, and he dies. And I don't know how that all, all works. But there are steps and other, like just good teaching that, is, that we're unlocking today. The third influence is the person receiving prayer. Luke 8 and verse 43. And the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And no one could heal her 
But she came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. Immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus said. They all denied it. Peter said, Master, the people are crowding, pressing against you. But Jesus said, no, somebody touched me. Another virgin said, somebody had faith. I know because power has gone out from me. The woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people and God's uh, in the presence of all the people and she told him why she touched him and she had been instantly healed then he said daughter your faith has healed you go in peace so <clears throat> uh, Pastor Dan you have been in many altar calls praying for people I have also and uh, sometimes when I'm praying for people people have got their arms folded feet out like that and they're assuming a position like you will not push me down I don't care if you fall down stand up roll around as long as you get healed falling down is not the goal today maybe they're standing there Dan with an attitude maybe they got ticked off because the coffee was cold or all sorts of weird things can go through people's minds but the bitter, and, and I'm trying to pray for them. The Bible says, and you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Yeah. The ability is the, the word to receive, yeah. Yeah. to receive from God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to say, again, God, God, can, God can do whatever He wants because He's God. But the Bible does say, lift holy hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I just think that sometimes our posture and, and, and what's happening around our life, our attitude can affect it. Yeah. Most people, listen to me, most people don't think the miracle is going to happen to them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're believing for Auntie Joan or you know, somebody else. But for God to take away the cancer in my life, mm, I'm not sure. That's okay. God can live with that, but Sometimes, he, he, sometimes there's barriers that we put up and, you know, somebody's pushed you to the front to be prayed for, but there's like that, that anger or bitterness. How many times have I been on, the, on a stage and we've prayed for somebody and then I, I said, how, how, are you, how are you feeling, sweetheart? And she goes, when I walked in today, I knew that God was going to heal me. I knew you were going to point at me. Hundreds, thousands of people have said things like that. Other times I've said, how does it go? I knew I wasn't going to get healed today. I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. <laughs> I was in New Zealand. We were at a pastor's. After church, the pastor said to me, would you come and pray for my son? I said, sure. Didn't know it was a three-hour drive, so we drove three hours. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with him? He said, he's got cancer under his ribs. I said, okay. He said, he's terminal. I said, well, let's pray for him. So we're praying for three hours as we're driving to the venue. Go to his house. He's in bed. I said, How, how's it going? He said, not so good. Tell me what happened. He said, well, the first cancer was as big as a pea. They took it out. Then it got as big as a golf ball. Big as a tennis ball. They had to remove my whole rib cage now. And he's got a tumor as big as a football. And he said, they can't do anything about it. I said, well, I said, we're going to pray. I said, when did you become a Christian? He says, I'm not a Christian. I said, brilliant. <laughs> I, I'm just here just in time. So I went through, went through all my uh, Romans, all the, all the good stories, told my funny jokes. You know, I said, come on, mate. You know, how, how, how are we going now? He says, no, no, would you just hurry up and get on with it? I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, now still, my theology, God can do it. He can just do it whatever, whatever way, however way. I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to be obedient. I'm just going to pray like, like nothing else. So I got to pray for him. And true story, I put my hand on him and it was, I took my hand off. Because it was like he was cold already. I got such a fright. And I had to readjust and then I prayed. 
maybe like for 15 minutes, which is actually like when you're praying intensely, it's, it's a reasonable length of time. And I, and I opened my eyes and he was already looking at me and I knew that he knew nothing had happened. One of my, in, in 35 years of ministry, my saddest day was that day. As we had to, as I had to hold the pastor as he was crying and we went to the car after the service, after meeting him, drove home. I got down on my knees in my, in my room before, before night church and I started calling out to God. I wonder if the worship team could join me. I started calling out to God. I rung the pastor and I said, we need to go back. <laughs> he said, why are we going back? I said, because maybe I didn't pray long enough. Something, something needed to turn for him. I should have told him another funny joke. Another, maybe another Bible verse. I should have stayed the night. You see, the truth is you can get to heaven with cancer, but you can't get to heaven with sin in your life. I should have led him to the Lord. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and his works and he will flee. When we submit ourselves, when we humble ourselves to God, it gives us a window, access to Him. Pride is the thing that says, I will do it when I want, how I want. <laughs> That's not lordship. That's the thing that kicked the devil out of heaven and put him into hell. That's the thing that says, I'll do it my way, my time. I said, no, I'm God, <laughs> which means I'm kind of a big deal. Come, when's the last time you were honest with God? When you're honest with Him, He's not angry. He said, come, I want to heal. I want you to have your best life. And it's not with this sin that has been lingering it's not with this half in, half out. It's not, that's not it. It's in relationship with Him. The fourth influence, we'll finish with this, is the devil. <laughs> oh, he's real, all right. I can tell you right now, he does not want you to be healed. Mm -mm. But most of all, he does not want you to be a Christian living a life that is honouring of Him. The devil says in John 10, the devil, the thief only comes, only, only, his only reason yeah. is to steal, yeah. to kill and to destroy. Yeah. I have come, that's God, that you would have life and life in all of its fullness. One of the other translations in, in, in De Deuteronomy says, I set before you life and death, but choose life. Here he is saying the devil. So I know for a fact, he does not want you to be healed, does not want you to be saved. And you put all sorts of things around your mind to stop you from doing that, from, from saying, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm the mayor of the city. I'm too important. I'm, I'm a, a, an elder of the church. I'm, I'm so, who cares? Fall on the rock. Fall on Jesus. Lest the rock fall on you. Humble yourself. Let God do the miracle. Let the Holy Spirit come. Fall, let it fall, let it fall. How do I know it's real? I was in South Africa. Hillsong, South Africa. Spoken five times. See, thousands of people come to Christ in, the, in those services. And I'm tired. <laughs> My voice had gone. I'm walking off the stage and there's a, a, a man, a, a, actually a lady in a, in a wheelchair. 
And as I'm walking past, I heard a voice say to me, one more, Andrew. And I knew it was the Lord and I gave him the shake. Mm -mm -mm. (laughs) Haven't we all done that? God talked to him, I'm tired. So I said to the person, can I pray for you? She said, yeah. And this is live streamed to all their churches. So it's kind of like a bit of a big deal. And I leant over and I said, what's happened? She said, well, 22, I haven't walked for 22 years. And I'm asking Jesus to walk today. I said, okay, well, let's give it a go. <laughs> I'm in. So he started to pray. She's bawling her eyes out. And I could hear this other voice on my shoulder saying, Andrew, you should stop now. If you continue to pray and she doesn't get up, they'll know that God is not real. You see, when I'm praying, I can hear God and I can hear the devil. He's whispering to me. He's telling me, stop it, stop it. And I remember in that moment saying, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And I'm sure the whole congregation thought I was delivering her from a demon. But I'm delivering myself from a demon, amen. As we continue to pray, she said, my legs, my legs, I can feel my legs. I said, when's the last time you felt your legs? 22 years ago. I said, what can we do? She said, I'm going to stand. So I said, okay, well, let's try and stand. And she began to walk. Pastor Phil Dooley was on the stage receiving the love offering at the time. Stopped the whole thing. What's happening? I said, I'm not even too sure, Pastor Phil. An amazing moment. But I want to tell you, if the devil's talking to me, he's talking to you. A whisper. It'll be a whisper. Don't you do it. Don't you be honest. Don't humble yourself. If I can say anything to you today, tell the devil to get stuffed. Today's about your life, your miracle. Something can shift for you. Don't let the devil win. Not today, not here, not now. There's something shift for you. Today is about you coming to God, allowing the Holy Spirit to come into your life and seeing a miracle take place in your life.